yani the men and the women, they begin to display themselves in front of the opposite gender and forget about their wives and their husbands whom they should be sharing this beauty with. And the Prophet wasallam said, I saw in hellfire. Brothers and sisters, I'm just quoting the facts. I'm not trying to put anything on anyone. Just the facts of what the Prophet wasallam said. And Prophet wasallam when he spoke, he spoke out of sorrow and sadness about the future of what will happen to his ummah. Because when he was in his last breath, Rasul said to his ummah, please, I have left you on the clear white page. It's day, it's night is as clear as it's day. Do not swerve away from it. And he recited Allah's verse, today I have perfected your religion for you and completed my favor upon you and am pleased with Islam submission to God as your religion. And Rasul Sallallahu said, Oh Allah, bear witness, I have informed, I have informed. He was sad. What is he saying? I saw in hellfire a group of women, for example, whom I've never seen the likes of before, meaning of the future. They are dressed but undressed. They walk in a seductive manner. And they do fashions upon their heads in order to, in a type that attracts attention. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us this is something of the future. He's never seen the likes of before, not among the Romans, the Byzantines of his time. He did not see them among the Persians of his time. He did not see them among the Mushrikeen of his time or among the Muslims of his time. This is something which the humans begin to do at large, Muslim, non-Muslim. And he said among my ummah, from my nation, subhanallah. And how often do we find young people imitating and copying who? Celebrities, where Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did tell us that there will come a time when upon my ummah, they will begin to follow them step by step, foot by foot, that if they were to enter the hole of a lizard, they will follow them. حَتَّى وَلَوْ دَخَلُوا جُحْرَ ضَبٍ لَدَخَلْتُمُوهُ قَالُوا الْيَهُودُ وَالنَّصَارَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ قَالَ فَمَنْ They said, O Messenger of Allah, do you mean that we will be following step by step the customs and traditions and morals of the Christians and Jews of that time? He said, yes, who else? The Romans will be the largest in number and power and influence. This is a hadith from the Prophet ﷺ. You find it in Sahih Muslim that the Romans, the Romans in those days used to call them Ar-Rum. Ar-Rum, you know, means today something like the Euro, basically the Europeans of today. That we, they will be the larger amount. They will have the most influence on people such as Hollywood, such as, you know, uh, Britain and France and all those other places, they will have influence on people, on my ummah, he said. And you will follow them step by step. Not, not, any, some things are good, but majority is bad. Their customs and morals. What do we see in our young people? Whether they are in the Arab countries or outside, in the Muslim countries or outside, in the Western countries or beyond it, the Muslim youth, look at them. What kind of things do you like to dress in? What kind of people do you imitate? Who do you really want to be like? Really? And don't fool yourself. Who do you really want to be like? And then some of them feel guilty today to the point where they try to justify things like uh, that the Prophet has forbidden and turn it into a religious thing, such as tattooing. I've seen young people tattooing now on themselves, ayat of the Quran, the name of Allah. And they say, you know, I've tattooed it because I want my Lord to know this is who I am. This is my identity. But they don't pray. They're drinking. They're out neglecting themselves, staying up all night, neglecting their salat, neglecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is this? Copying and imitating the wrong people. Al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us. He said, In nabayna yaday sa'a ka qita'im min al al muslim. Before the end of time, you will see this prevailing sign. What is it? There will be afflictions, 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 trials, tests of hardship. Afflictions that are like smoke filling the air, darkness with dark clouds above you. And it will weaken the heart of a person just like his body weakens. In the morning he is a believer and by the evening he becomes a disbeliever. And in the evening he is a believer and by the morning he is a disbeliever. 
So much fitan, confusion, deception, lies. A person in the evening is a believer. By the morning, they went on the internet and it confused everything about their religion to the point where they become atheists. They become something other than their own religion. We live in this time today. How many times I get this question now from young people? I never used to get them, you know, a few years back. How do I know if my religion is the correct one? You know, I've been debating with this atheist and wallah, I don't know what to answer. I'm thinking of becoming an atheist myself. Yes. Have you heard about the Muslim gay society? There's one in Sydney. There's one in America and there's one in London. The one in America is very old, the oldest one. The one in London is second oldest. There is a lesbian mosque and a male gay mosque. Now, Ar Rasul Sallallahu told us, you will have uh, before the end of time, a immatum mudillun. You will have leaders who will lead you astray. In America, there is a masjid. Its imam is a woman who gives the khutbah and she leads the men and women in salat. Even a woman makes the adhan. And the men say takbir when they hear her khutbah. Takbir about what, I wonder? Because this is an abomination of what the Prophet ﷺ taught us. There is equality between man and women. And Rasul ﷺ, the Quran already made it. Allahu Akbar. But in an appropriate manner. A way that there is that shows you self-respect, teaches you self-respect. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Rasul Sallallahu tells us these people who wake up in the morning believers and by the end of the night they are disbelievers. He said, يَبِعُونَ دِينَهُمْ وَأَخْلَاقَهُمْ بِعَرَضٍ مِّنَ الدُّنْيَا The reason is that they sell their character, their morals and their religion because of a gain of this world. Lust, desire, money, a car, fame, fortune, whatever, you name it. Rasul Sallallahu said, A time shall come when a person is given insight in the daytime. So he's very aware. He can tell you so many things about everything of the world. But in the evening, he commits every sin under the sun, takes bribes, become dishonest, etc., etc., etc. People are very good in front of people. But when you are alone in secret, they break every sin under the sun, as though Allah is not watching them. This is hypocrisy. And we live in a world of hypocrisy. Brothers and sisters, I want to ask you a question. Think about this. If you take the whole world, it is made up of people. Take away the disbelievers if you don't want them there and count the Muslims alone, for example. Then the Muslims are made up of nations. These nations are made up of states. These states are made up of communities. The communities are made up of families and the families are made up of units of families. Each unit of family is made up of members, unit members, one, a son, a daughter, sons, daughters, father, mother. When this individual and the next individual, and the third individual, and all these one individuals become hypocrites and corrupt their state, what happens? The whole community is automatically corrupt. The whole state is already automatically corrupt. Then the nation and then the world. More than one point something billion Muslims in the world. And look at our state. Look at our state. What were the images we saw? What Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells detrimental hadith wallahi. He said, لا خير فيكم إذا فسد أهل الشام. There is no good in you, O Muslims, when the day comes that the people of Sham are corrupt. Their state is corrupt. They're neglected. Their state is destruction. There is no good in you. As though saying, Sham is the heart of you. And if its people are not looked after anymore, what is wrong with the Ummah of the Muslims of the world? Something is terribly, terribly wrong. We can blame the leaders. And Rasul Sallallahu did say that there will come a time when you will have leaders who are form of, in the form of dictatorship and they are unjust and they will lead you in tyranny. And he also said, when the time comes, when the amana, the trust is given to the person who cannot hold it and the person who is a liar is believed and the believing and the person who is trustworthy is said to be a liar. Yes, it's going to come. But what about you and me who are not leaders? We have a responsibility first for, my, for yourself. Are you fulfilling that responsibility by being a person obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
a person fulfilling your character, a person fulfilling your deen in the proper manner? Or are you a hypocrite in the day good, in the night sinful? In, your, in a person's face, mashaAllah, behind his back, depending on who's around me. Listen to this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, The last hour will not come until you find yourself that if you were among 20 young men, more or less, and you check their faces, you look at them all, and you are a believer, you're a good believer, and you looked at you know, a number of 20 or more or less, and found out that none of them fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is time for the hour. What is he saying? He's saying when you see young men, there are many of them, and they're in large numbers together, hanging out in certain places or going together, and you cannot see any signs of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their faces as a whole, then wait for the last hour to come. We're talking about from the Ummah of the Prophet And What does this mean? In the nightclubs, they go in groups. In mixed weddings, singing and dancing, they're in groups. Going out to meet two or three girls, they're in groups. A concert happens where a singer comes along or a dancer or whatever, and they go in groups. Not one or two, in groups. They go to commit fahisha. They go to, you know, have argila all night until fajr time. Neglecting the Maghrib prayer, neglecting the Isha prayer, neglecting the Fajr prayer, because as soon as they get home, they're too tired. They've got to give their body rights. So these young people full of energy and muscles and brains and, and strength, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put you as the leaders of this ummah, you are the responsible people, wasting their time, wasting their bodies, wasting their energy, wasting their youth, wasting their health. On what? On just fulfilling the desires of this body and smoking things that kill you burning their money on things that kill them. Everywhere in the world they exist, brothers and sisters. Rasul Sallallahu said, when you see this, then await for the last hour to come. And he said, when there will be more evil people, persons than the good ones, to the point when, listen to this, when the believers will hide themselves. يَسْتَخْفِي مِنْهُمُ المؤمن كَمَا يَسْتَخْفِي الْمُنَافِقُ فِينَ الْيَوْمِ the believers will hide themselves too ashamed or too embarrassed or too scared to show themselves that they are believers. Just like the way Rasul said, just like the way hypocrites today hide themselves, hypocrites. The believers will hide themselves because of the amount of the corruption that's out there. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now said, Al-Mahdi, the awaited Mahdi who will lead the Ummah of Islam. His name is Muhammad son of Abdullah will come out and he will lead the Muslim Ummah of the world into justice. So the first people in Mahdi will fight are Arabs who are under the banner of Islam but they've erred, gone wrong. As they are approaching a group of them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the earth swallow them. They all die. Imagine yourself reciting Quran with proper Tajweed. Do not delay, time is short. Your tutor is waiting for you for a free trial class. Download Qutor now and join other students learning Quran. Link in the description. Very interesting video and it summarizes some of the scenes that uh, show that we're losing our way in life. Um, this is not just applicable to young people, but I think the older generation as well because at the end of the day we all get to sin just because we sin differently doesn't mean um, the rest go to heaven and the rest go to hell um, he spoke about how people dress how they cover their hair how they do whatever they do with their hair um, I think about that it, what I think about that is the fact that you can't really do something just to please someone. You've got your creator here and you've got people you have to please. So you're, you're telling me you're going to disrespect your creator only to save face and um, make this other group of people feel better or feel like you're also an outlaw like them. Not even an outlaw or just like them, like you and them are the same. Why should we strive to be same? If I'm supposed to um, have locks in my hair, I'm, I'm going to have locks. If I'm supposed to cover my hair, I'm going to cover my hair. If I'm supposed to cover my um, 
feet i'm going to cover my feet i shouldn't live to please people the more we please people the more the more we lose ourselves and um another great example that was given is the fact of people going in groups to sin and uh, the smart people in this world you can sin together but every time they go back home they're on their knees asking for forgiveness some it's peer pressure some it's what and then there is you that goes out to sin with them and you're just too tired to even talk to god to even ask for forgiveness and you just drop down and sleep now the difference is there's one of you that prayed for forgiveness and spoke to god forgiven and there is you that just slept what do you think um happens in such a situation what, what do you think you're going to be forgiven no at the end of the day sin is sweet we're going to love we, we all love doing things that um we know we're not supposed to do and it's easy to learn those bad habits or whatever you want to call them it's up to us to reflect on life to reflect on what we want to achieve and yeah i just wish um everyone this year to be kind to realize that there's more to life than just simply worldly things and not to lose our value because we want to um make other people feel like we belong or we're in the same kind of category or group yes we're people but we shouldn't have to devalue ourselves to impress other people let me know what you guys actually think make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe if there's something you guys want me to react to please drop the link in the comment section below and i'll be more than glad to react to it there's actually people that drop links but end up deleting them just drop them or we'll react to them with time just feel free to suggest anything and i'll see you in my next video